I am Marie and today I wanted to go over what I plan to do the first day of school. I have it, mm, I have a really good skeleton planned out. It's actually more than a skeleton. I have a good outline done. I have a couple of the parts of it done completely, but I wanted to walk you a little bit through my thought process. I've been doing this, um, I've done a couple different plan with me videos. One that I did um, where I filmed like Two different cameras at once and it was me talking and then you could also see my hands writing i did one where i did it on instagram live and then i saved it and i did a second one on instagram live that's actually this lesson that i'm about to show you and i did a total rookie mistake and i totally like didn't plug in my phone and it died halfway through and I lost all the footage and I felt so bad for the people that were like following along and I kept saying, don't worry if you miss something I say, this will be up later. So this is going to be a little bit of a repeat for some of you who saw this already on Instagram, but I'm gonna go through what I'm doing my first day of school. This coming school year, I will be teaching all 10th grade English in the fall. In the spring right now, I'm slated for 10th grade and 9th grade. We'll see how that actually pans out and mine ended up being 11th. I mean, who the heck knows, right? You never know what's going to happen sometimes. Um, but I am doing a total flexible seating classroom. It's something that I have always wanted to do and always tried to kind of incorporate uh, more flexible of a floor plan with like bigger tables instead of desks and that sort of thing. And I'm at a point in my career, I'm going into year 12 where I finally feel like I have not just like enough notches on my belt, but I feel like I have the research to back it up um, and to show parents, students, administrators, anybody who's questioning why I might be doing this. In fact, if this is something that you want to do, I do have a resource for you. And it's an infographic that I made on flexible seating. Um, I'll link it down below if you wanna take a look at that. It's got the research on it. It's got the reasons why flexible seating is good for most kids. Anyways. I say this because uh, my teaching style goes very much along with the ideas behind flexible seating, that student choice is a huge factor in student achievement and in true learning, not just like rote memorization, but actual true learning of skills. Um, and also because I have always kind of lived by or taught by the philosophy that teachers are not meant to be the sage on the stage. We are meant to be like a learning coach and while 15 year old 10th graders don't necessarily need only a coach. They need to learn how to teach themselves how to learn if that kind of makes any sense. So all of this is to get at my very first day of school is going to be a learning stations rotation day where kids are going to go to, I think I have six. I might be lying to you, uh, but different stations around the room and it'll be their first kind of foray into different concepts we will be covering. I'm not getting like really in depth about like today or you know, like this year we're gonna talk about romanticism, which isn't even something I'm teaching, but like I'm not going quite that way. It's more of like um, skills that they'll be learning ways that they'll be learning. Each of my different rotations is a different type of activity and it is all student led because that is very much my classroom, very much student led. So without any further ado, I'm gonna show you my process. You're gonna see my hands in a second. Sorry, I did not get a manicure. <laughs> my daughter's birthday is tomorrow. So I've been kind of setting up and getting things ready for that because she's gonna be two. And that is the life of a uh, teacher mom. So try and follow along as best you can. I will also have all of the stuff that I am doing here available. Some of it will be for free if you sign up for my um, newsletter through my blog and I'll link that down below. I'll have a couple of pieces of this lesson will be my freebie for the August newsletter in 2018. But if you want your hands on the whole entire thing, I will also have that available as soon as I can on Teachers Pay Teachers. My store is Caffeinated Curriculum. And, or if you just wanna make it yourself, just follow along with my like thought process here as much as you can because I know that sometimes listening to somebody else think is like a little bit crazy. Yeah, so. Shall we? Let's dive in. Okay, so as you can see here, I have already scribbled out my thoughts for my learning stations. And here I have the five stations that I talked about last week when I did my Instagram live. If you were one of the, you know, lucky individuals that saw me crash and burn at that one because it went and died in the middle because I'm a doof. Um, but I have actually gonna, I'm actually gonna have six different stations for this because... 
it kind of works out with the numbers. We have bigger class sizes um, in California than I think a lot of parts of the country. And so I don't want to have too many kids. Like I don't want six kids at each station. I'd rather have, which I very well, even with six, I might still have six kids. I might have 36 is actually a pretty normal class size. So if I have eight kids at each station, that would be bad, you know? <laughs> so anyways, my first station, and I'm going to go through this because I know this is scary to look at, so I apologize, but station one for my very first day of school, oh, and mind you, here I've got written out, this is 10th grade ELA, um, it's, we're on a 4 by 4 schedule, which means that we have four periods each day, the kids have four classes, but like, teachers have a prep in three sections, and classes are 90 minutes long, so I will have these kiddos that I'm getting on the first day of school for the first two quarters of the year and then at the halfway mark it's all totally brand new and we get all new kids for all of our classes and that's how I'll probably be switching to another grade level um but you can kind of see here station one is going to be getting to know Mrs. Morris um and it's not as much getting to know me yes it is kind of getting to know me but it's more getting to know the room and the space and the feel of the environment of the room um and so what I'm actually going to do here is like a QR code um scavenger hunt I'm still kind of figuring that out so if I have time in this video I'm limiting my time here to less than 20 minutes so if I have time I will go through that otherwise you guys I'll totally put it up on Instagram so that you can see exactly how it works but the idea is that kids are going to have five different stations around the room with questions um, about me and they are answers that they can infer from the room so things that they'd be able to figure out about figure out about me from observing the space and just observing how I am in the first, you know, 10, 15 minutes of classes, I'm welcoming all of them. Then they will check their answer with it by scanning a QR code, which will also give them the next hint to find the next question. And then the very last one, I'll have some sort of like a, I don't know, like a homework coupon or I don't really do homework. So I'll do something where they get like an extra credit coupon or something like that, or I'll give them like probably a coupon to visit the cafe in my room. So it'll be like for a, you know, a cup of hot chocolate or tea or something like that. That's what I'll do. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Hold on guys, let me find a post-it note. Thank you for sitting through this with me. Okay, I love this idea. So the prize at station five, or actually, sorry, at QR question number five, which will be the last one, is going to be a cafe coupon. So basically, every kid's going to get this, and that's fine. And then, okay, the second station is a growth versus a fixed mindset where they're going to just watch a video or two on YouTube and then um, sit in a group and answer some discussion questions. Then station number three is going to be a quiz on their learning styles, except I don't actually think it's going to be a quiz. I think it's going to be a video about learning styles. I don't know. We'll see if I can find a quiz that's short enough. Then there's an article from The Atlantic called The Myth of Learning Styles, which debunks learning styles and multiple intelligences because mm, that's not a thing, okay? So that's going to be that. And then um, I'm kind of excited about that. And I'll have some sort of an exit ticket question for them to fill out and then like leave at the station for me to pick up at the end so I can go through and then talk about it the next day. Then station number four is each kid is going to find a quote about reading, whether it's the importance of reading or how people learn how to read or whatever, or like, I don't know. I really don't care, actually. This is just to put some sort of idea for them that reading is not going to be just something that is mandated, but we're going to cu like cultivate a love for reading. Um, and reading doesn't always mean big, huge novels. That's the other thing that I'm kind of getting at here. So I'll have a couple of quotes already picked out and then I'm going to um, print onto cardstock or onto three by five cards, something that looks like an old fashioned like library card, like a checkout card where they can write their name and the date and then write down their quote and then they'll put it up on a bulletin board. So that is kind of like an interactive bulletin board fun thing here. Then the last station that I had outlined here, and then I'll tell you what my sixth one is in a second, is on the writing process, and it's a mini escape room. And that's actually what I'm going to talk through right this second. Okay, yes. And then let me just tell you, sorry, do you hear how scattered my brain can get? I'm kind of like this anyways, but also I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old, so I don't have a brain anymore. Um, I should also say that these rotations are probably going to be like nine to ten minutes each with one to two minutes of a transition, so I'm going to have about an hour 
for this and I have 90 minutes so I'm gonna pat it with about 10 to 15 on the front end and 10 on the back to kind of get kids acclimated at the beginning and then do a little debrief and see how everything went and just to give myself time in case this takes too long um, but this last station number six station number six is gonna be a really easy one for the kids it's gonna be a Google form Google form survey of their likes, their birthday, some information, some housekeeping stuff that I kind of need. But that's not what we're really talking about today. Today, we are going to focus on, because I don't have that much time left in my allotment. So this station five was going to be like a mini, some sort of a puzzle having to do with the writing process. And then as I started thinking about it, I was like, well, maybe it's going to be a bunch of like, we're, you know how like um, elementary have like the sentence strips and then you chop them up, you chop up the sentence and you you change them up so it becomes like a sentence strip puzzle and then kids have to reorder the word. I was thinking that for like the writing process and then I was like, well, maybe that could be the writing process and the engineering design process. And then I started thinking through what that would look like and I decided, no, that's super lame. So instead, I came over to this idea, which is a mini escape room on the writing process. And this is super fun and cool. I have already made the first puzzle in the writing process escape room. There's only two puzzles and then the very third stop is the prize. So what it is, is it's a piece of paper and I can kind of draw it out. It's just an eight and a half by 11 landscape. And I created this on PicMonkey. And this is actually one of the freebies in my newsletter. And it goes like across like this and then the different parts okay so here it says the writing process okay then these are all going to get cut apart right so actually I think I did like little so you would like cut along there so it kind of looks like a puzzle but it really doesn't matter if the notches are there it's basically kids have to get these things in order so then this is like uh, pre-writing it says right here and then down here it says the definition of pre-writing and then here it's uh is it drafting oh my gosh i wish i knew the process and then the definition and then here it, it goes through to like publish right and these all have the definitions and so all of these will be cut out all of these little pieces and I'll have to put them in order. Then down here, there's a space to fill in like an equation. Here, let me zoom in for you guys. Down here at the bottom of these little parts, there's like a spot where it says blank plus blank equals and then there's a little dot. And then down here, they'll have to take that number and divide it by something to get the first code. And this will be, so here's number one, two, three, four, five. This will be a five digit code for a lock let me go back out this will become a five digit code for a lock that lock will then unlock the next puzzle <laughs> the next puzzle is going to be is something that i'm actually going to make later today is a paragraph where they have to like fill in the blank i'm not sure if it's going to be editing a paragraph and filling in missing words or if it might be um, like an mla format fill in the blank we'll see but then there will be certain letters within the blank so let's say um oh I don't know it'll be like Shakespeare let's pretend I'm doing this as like an MLA format one Shakespeare comma blank and then like you know whatever the rest of the citation is they would have to fill in William and then let's pretend that M is the first letter in this lock. So this next lock for this puzzle to unlock the prize is going to be a letter code. Yeah, so I'm gonna make it work for however many, I think the, the lock that I found is a four letter code. So they'll have to fill in these blanks and then figure out that the correct, or it'll be like a crossword. Oh, maybe I'll do a crossword puzzle, guys. I think that's better than editing. They'll have to like figure out and, and answer things about the writing process and all sorts of stuff. Hey, thanks for being here with me. Do you like how I just think of stuff? Okay, forget this fill in the blank. This will be a crossword. 
and then the the lock code will be within oh, that is so fun and then once they get so they put together this whole writing process puzzle to figure and do a little bit of math to figure out what the five digit code is for the first lock okay so this is lock number one then they're gonna do the second puzzle which i think is gonna be a crossword i like that idea a lot which would be a four or five letter code instead of uh, numbers the first one will be digits the second one will be letters because within that crossword will be the different letters of the code for the second lock and then that will unlock the prize which is dum-dums because i think i'm funny that was a lot of information this is a freebie <laughs> so sign up for my newsletter down below um i'm super excited about that i think that's just about all i have time for and i think that's just about all that brains can hold right now but this i know this seems like a lot but it will be done within 10 minutes because kids are working together they're working in a group whether i'm going to have them split up into two small groups of like three and three or three and four however the numbers work out or if i'm going to have to work all together i'm kind of evilly thinking that they might have to work as one big group so that they learn the teamwork aspect but i don't know we'll see yeah, so that is my, that's station number five in my first day of school stations. Um, the other ones are nowhere near as involved. As you saw back over here, they are just like, this first one is getting to know me, the QR code, like scavenger hunt. This is all around the room, but it's pretty easy. And they get to check their answers by scanning a code. The second one is to probably watch a video or listen to a short podcast clip or something like that, have some discussion questions. The third one is about learning style. So either I'm gonna find a short quiz for them to fill out or I'll have them watch another video because why not and then read the quick article or excerpts of the article and at answer a question and then find a quote so that one's pretty passive the escape room is really fun and then the last one the google form is pretty passive so it just depends on like where kids are and i'll like these probably won't be their official numbers of the stations they'll probably be spread out because i don't know i need to make sure that like the really passive ones are kind of farther away from each other so i might switch and i don't want like if i show two videos on growth mindset and learning styles or multiple intelligences i don't want them right next to each other so i'll probably like swap things out but anyways you get an idea this is what i'm doing on the first day of school i'm excited to show it to you yeah here we go thank you guys so much for watching and for listening to all of that i know that i am number one a fast talker and number two i kind of circle around a lot of things but i've said this before and i'll say it again i really do think that it is beneficial especially for new teachers but even myself as a veteran like i've been teaching over a decade it's great to be able to hear somebody else think aloud and like think through or talk through their thinking process on how they're going to actually like plan curriculum it's just a good way to like hear the reasoning it's great for kids it's great with, like i teach through think aloud that's why i have been recording these while i kind of think through some things and i don't just tell you what i'll be teaching and show you the polished product i like to think through it so that um teachers can learn from each other like i like to watch how other people work too so that i can learn the way that they come up with stuff and i actually get some great creativity and some great inspiration through that so that is why I do this this way. And if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, please leave them down below. It might take me a couple of days because I do have two little ones at home, but I will get back to your questions and your comments. Um, I'm starting to get a lot of the same sorts of questions about things. So I think I might do a Q and A um, video in the next month or so, just to answer a bunch of those for everybody. But yeah, like I said earlier in the video, if this is something that you would like to get your hands on and you're like, okay, that's cool, but I don't want to make it, um, check out my Teachers Pay Teacher Store caffeinated curriculum. I will link it down below. And if you just want like a couple pieces, a couple pieces of this are going to be free in my August 2018 newsletter. So if you sign up for that and also put that link down below. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and subscribe because every week I will be doing plan with me sessions just like this. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.